Hi all of you, hope you guys are great. So one of you have requested me to create a smart contract for a charity organization. So what this contract will do, it will take the fund from the user and that fund will be in the pending mode. So the owner of the contract, he has to verify the contract, the transaction, the funding, then only that particular transaction will be acceptable in this contract. So you can get the idea from this contract and you can include more feature, more functionality as point of your business model which you want to provide into this charity event organization. So here you can see that I have opened Remix ID and uh, the one thing I want to recommend is that in this particular contract, I'm using eight version of Solty. You can go with beyond eight, but I would not recommend you to go with the lesser one because you will encounter some error because there is a lot of changes happen, a lot of new feature added in the version above eight one. So I would suggest you to go with the eight or 0.9. It's totally up to you but make sure to go with eight and above that. So this is the contract name I have created. And the very first data set we have in the contract is this struct. You can see I call it donation. And in that we are keeping few relevant information about the user who will donate the fund into the charity contract. So the very first data type we have inside the struct is the address. And obviously you have to know that who have donated the fund in the contract. So we are keeping that track here address. Then we are keeping the amount that how much he or she have donated the fund in the contract. Then we have this particular Boolean variable and this particular variable will define whether the transaction the donation is verified or not so this verification can only done by the owner of the contract so if someone wants to donate any fund into the contract the owner of the contract the creator of the contract he has to verify the transaction then the donation will be acceptable in the contract so this is the second data set we have which is a mapping so we are mapping the data we are mapping the information based on the address so we'll pass the address and it will give us the entire relevant information about the user amount and the verification then we have this public variable which is a charity so this is going to be the address of the creator who will do uh, who will deploy the contract so that's the address we are keeping here then we have this particular variable which is a total donation so we have to give the information to the user because this contract is going to be public it's a charitable contract so the user the donator of the contract they can know that how much fund they have donated how much fund exactly have been donated so far so here we're going to simply update this particular variable and that's why we have this data type UNT and again I'm telling you that if you're not familiar with a smart contract and what are these data sets what are the keywords we have included in the contract make sure to check the entire playlist of sorty smart contract development so I have a huge course in that we have close to 60 to 70 video in, the, in, in that I have explained every single thing about this entire variables entire keyword and how you can be good at sorty smart contract okay so these are the three data set we have now we have this event so as you all know that events are the most cheapest way to store data on the blockchain because when you store data or anything on the blockchains it costs money so it's always preferable that you should store and have event in your contract which can keep the information which you want to fetch and display in your front end so just imagine that there is a particular transaction is happening you can do that you can store that information in an array in a mapping but then you have to pay a higher amount of money for storing the information and you can do the same thing in other way by calling this event function so you can simply call this event function and you can retrieve the data from the blockchain based on this event and here we have this constructor in this we have to take the constructor because we have to update the address of the on of the contract so that's what we are doing whoever will deploy the contract we are updating his address then we have this total donation is going to be zero because initially at the time of deployment if you want to deploy if you want to donate something at the time of deployment definitely you can do that but here we'll try to keep it zero so this is the first so modifier is a kind of function which allow you to write certain code inside the modifier which you can use it over and over again into your entire smart contract so it's just like a reusable model or reusable code you can call it so again if it sounds complicated you can must check the entire sorority course we have on the channel so here what we are doing here is that we are calling this only charity so the owner of the contract only he or she can call the function and that's the check we are doing here we are saying that message.sender means whoever is calling this function whoever is calling this function he has he has to be the charity means the deployer of the contract if now that's the case then we're going to throw this particular error message that the only the only the charity can call this particular function okay so that's the check we are doing and we can use this particular hook you can call it hook you can call it function this particular one anywhere in your contract by calling this particular name 
I'll, sh I'll show you how you can call that one. So this is the first modifier we have. Let me close that one. And then we have this particular function called make donation. So this will exactly allow user to donate fund into the contract. So what we are doing here, first we are checking for the value. So obviously you don't want the user should donate something like zero because when they will make the transaction as a zero, they have to pay the gas fee. So you don't want that anybody should donate a zero, nothing. So that's the check we are doing. So whatever fund they're donating, it should be greater than zero. So that's the first check we have to do. You can add multiple conditions. You can make a set of users, set of user in, in form of array and you can allow only those users to donate the fund. You can set that kind of rules as well. Okay, so that's the check we are doing. Then we are calling this particular error message. Donation amount must be greater than zero. Obviously, you don't want to take this zero. Then what we are doing, once this condition successfully fulfilled, then we have to simply update the entire data we have in our contract. So you can see this is the donation struct we have taken and that's what we are doing here. So we are calling this donation memory and we are taking this donation and then we are simply updating the entire struct. So we have this struct donation then we are calling this particular message dot sender. So this will give us the address of the user, the signer who is calling the function. Then we have the message dot value, then we have this false. So these are the three data we are passing and one thing you have to remember is that this function will call by the donor the one who will donate the fund so we are setting this to false by default because this transaction will go to the uh, creator of the contract the charity owner and he has to verify the transaction so that's the entire data we are passing then we are simply increasing the fund you can see then we are simply passing this then we are simply passing this message dot sender into this donation so you can see here we have this donation which keep the track of the individuals and their information so that's what we are passing here and then we are simply updating the total funding which we are getting so we are adding that plus so it will increase every time the funding will come it with every time the donation will come this value will increase and then we have initialized this event so we can fetch that event we can fetch that information and we can display in our front end so that's the very first function we have in the contract let me close this one now let's come back to the second function which allow the charity owner the contract of the um, the owner of the contract to verify the funding the verify the donation so here we have called this verify donation and that we are taking the address of the user so that's what we are taking here we are making public and it's called only charity so only owner of the contract who can call this function not anybody else no one else can call this function because here we have attached and we have said explicitly that only owner of the contract can call the function so here we are checking for the condition we are checking this donation storage duration and then we are passing this his address to identify his particular donation that's what we are doing here and here we are making this multiple checks so what check we are doing here that whoever is donating the fund it should be not the zero address and what is the zero address means it's a contract so contract cannot donate any fund into the contract so only user address personal address can donate the fund not the contract and what is the difference between the contract and the user address user address will have the private key and contract will not have the private key. so that's the difference you have to keep in mind so donation not found so that's what we are calling here then we are checking for the verification that if it's already verified there is no point of calling the function because the transaction the donation is already verified so that's the check we are doing that if it's false then we have to verify allow the owner of the charity to verify the transaction otherwise we have to throw this error message and then we have to simply turn this is verified very variable to true means the transaction is verified and then we have to initialize this event so that's the entire function we have for verify donation so let me close that one now here we have the last function which allow to get the information from the contract about uh, individual donation so that's a fairly easy process and at then what we are doing here is we are returning the particular amount the user have donated and we are checking whether it's verified or not so this function is public user can come and he can check whether his transaction is, ex is still in pending means false or his transaction or his donation is expected so that's what we have done here so simply we are updating the data and then we are returning this to information the amount and the donation verified so this is the entire smart contract for this particular charity organization you can add more complexities for example if you are building this contract for a particular organization and you have information about the user whom you want to accept the donation so you can define all the addresses in the contract or you can yeah you can define it in the contract and you can allow them to donate the fund so there is a multiple way to do that you can define in the contract or you can take it 
in your front end in your, in your database and from there you can match the addresses and then you can simply make the donation happen but in that there is a chance that anybody can donate the fund so if someone's hack your front end they can easily able to get through that and they can interact with your contract and donate the fund so it's always necessary that you have to inform and you have to store the information in the contract if that's the data is really in really important and you don't want that anybody else call the function and donate anything into the contract um, like from the outside so hope this entire thing makes sense to all of you guys you can see we have no issues in that you can easily able to donate the fund you can make the donation you can verify that so this code i'm going to provide you in the discord server so let me copy that one and this is the public discord server for the blockchain coder and here you can able to find all the codes all the smart contract which i'm going to write and i'm not going to allow anybody else to write something in this discord server because what i have noticed that many of you share pornography like sex video those kind of things so i really don't like that one and a lot of people do spam so i really don't like that either so i'm going to just provide you all the smart contracts that's what i'm going to cover in the tutorials right here so you can come and you can join it and you can get the smart contract from here and if you have any questions any doubt you can simply contact me here in the mail so this is the mail just give a mail the query you have david will just simply send me back with the emails and i can respond to you okay so all the source code of the smart contract that would be provided here so you can make sure to join i'll provide the link in the description or you can go to the blockchain coder there is a discord section click on that and you can join this particular one, okay so i'm going to simply paste the entire contract and i'm going to hit enter and you can simply come and you can simply get the contract and you can do the experiment again i'm telling you that this is the simple model for a donation or for the charity event but you can add more complexity and i believe that you guys are following this particular project we have given a lot of emphasis so this one is a really amazing project which you can include in your portfolio because you are dealing with the contract and you are dealing with the back end you are bringing the api and the contract together and storing those information which is relevant on the blockchain and those information are not that important you are keeping in the centralized server so this will give you amazing learning that how you can work around the apis and build app so recently i have completed this entire metamask so must tell you so i must tell you that come here and watch this video and that i have explained that what are you going to build in the upcoming project and that we're going to build this metamask clones okay so make sure to come all of and have a look that what do you need and build all the project we have on the channel and the one thing i want to talk about that finally we have launched our first ai power application that is cinema it's a movie application where you will learn everything about web2 development and how to deal with the apis how to build a robust data structure where you can handle the state of our application so state is very important in any kind of application you build because that's what define and that's how you can provide access to the your user so make sure to come and check here i have explained everything that what you will get make sure to watch this video and that i have explained that what you going to exactly build we have a beautiful this particular application and here you will find all the modules we have defined so you going to build the structure you going to build the front end and this is the most important part this is the api reader toolkit so we going to learn extensively about the api calls and the most demandable technology like Redux toolkit it's one of the most demandable technology right now in the industry which you have to know if you really want to become a like dab developer or a api developer so this one is the most important things so make sure to come and check out and here we have some ad advanced features like login feature emails voice assistance so everything is explained beautifully so hope you guys have found this video valuable and if you still have any confusion and if you want me to write a specific contract for any topic do let me know in the comment section or shoot me email in this particular email id in this particular email id and i'll try to make a contract on top of that okay so hope you guys have found this video valuable if you still have any confusion any doubt do let me know in the comment section i'll try to help you in that have a wonderful day bye bye